come into your presence on your special day. It's a day you've set aside for us to worship and praise and to reflect on you. We want to reflect on the transfigured Christ and that we, like the disciples, might find ourselves alone with him and communing with you, Lord Jesus. Lord God, be with us and guide our thoughts and our words. In Jesus' name, amen. The readings for today are from 2 Kings chapter 2 verses 1 to 12, Psalm 50 verses 1 to 6, the second book of Corinthians chapter 4 reading from verses 3 to 6, and the gospel reading is from St. Mark chapter 9 verses 2 to 9. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, reading from verse 2. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Now after six days, Je Jesus took Peter, James and John and led them up to a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His clothes became shiny, exceedingly white, like snow, such as no launderer on earth can whiten them. And Elijah appeared to them with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah because he did not know what to say, for they were greatly afraid. And a cloud came and overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son. Hear him. Suddenly, when they had looked around, they saw no one any more, but only Jesus with themselves. Now as they came down from the mountain, he commanded them that they should tell no one the things they had seen, till the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ. The Collect for today. Holy God, on the mountain of transfiguration, you revealed your Son as the Christ. Transform our lives in His image. Write your law of love on our hearts and make us prophets of your shining splendor. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to our morning service. Uh, we're going to focus on Mark 9, verses 1 to 9, the transfiguration of Jesus. It's quite interesting that in the second verse here, he starts off, after six days. What? Six days after what? Um, Dr. Bruce, in his commentary, he says, this is a finger post pointing back to the previous paragraphs. So he's saying, if, if you want to know what follows, remember what went before. 
So what did go before? If you look back at 8 and verse 31, it was for Christ's first announcement about the cross. He spoke of rejection, he spoke of death, and he spoke of rising again. Hold on a sec, he was talking to the disciples about rising again. When they heard it, they recoiled from the fact that the master might die. They didn't understand rising again. Death they understood, but they couldn't accept it. But rising again was outside of their experience. Nobody knew what it was. What did it mean, rising again? What was he talking about? Why was he dying? They found it very difficult to expect, ex accept in their lives. You see, both Jesus and the disciples recoiled from the thought of his death. If we want to understand Mount Hermon, where he was transfigured, if we want to understand the whole context of it, then we must realise the despair of the disciples and the shattering impact of Christ's announcement that he would die. So far, all they had seen was miracles, clever speeches, a wonderful life. And now suddenly he's talking about death. The meaning and purpose of this wonderful event on Mount Hermon can only be seen in the light of him being strengthened and the disciples being encouraged in the face of the cross. Now look at Jesus, what did he do in this situation? It says he separated himself to pray, but he grabbed his three closest disciples and took them with him. He yielded himself to an entire consecration to God's mission, that he would taste death for each one of us. He goes up that mountain with the disciples and it's difficult to know what, it's, what happened to the disciples because in one book it says that they were very sleepy. In another book it says they buried their faces to the ground. So they were probably hiding away because when he gets to the top and he starts praying, the spirit, his spirit, shone out from his face. He became radiant, not just his face, but his whole body became radiant. Now in the Bible we read that Moses' face shone when he came down from the mountain after 40 days. We read of Stephen's death and it says he had the face of an angel when he was dying. We read of Francis of Assisi that he was so absorbed in prayer, it became changed, almost like another man. Evelyn Underhill, in her recollections about this transfiguration, says this, he had a countenance that is irradiated by the reflection of the uncreated light. Oh, isn't that amazing? Just think about that. And so he's praying and he's radiating all this light. And then they look and they see Elijah and, Emo and Moses. And they're talking to Jesus. Two of the Gospels say they were talking to Jesus. Luke tells us in 9 verse 31 that they were talking, actually talking about his death. Or as the King James Version says talking about his decease. But interestingly enough, the Greek word that's used there is exodus. So they were talking about his exodus. So think back to the exodus. What did it actually mean? It meant emancipation of the slaves. It meant redep redemption of the people. And it meant deliverance from Pharaoh and from Egypt. So through Jesus' exodus, the whole world would be saved and would be freed. Now, this encounter was really a touch of the joy of heaven. And it was there to help Jesus bear the suffering he was going to go through on earth. 
you read John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress, he takes Christian and hopeful to the land of Beulah. In this land, the air is sweet and pleasant. The sun shone all day. They had tremendous visions. And then he takes them out of the land of Beulah and he takes them to the cold and roaring waters of the Jordan. But their attitude has changed. Because of their experience before, they were looking across the river and they were seeing what was beyond and they were saying, now we want to go. We'll cross this terrible river, but we'll get to where we want to be. And this is what really happened with Jesus. He had to go through this pain of reflection on the death. And to alleviate that, God took him up to that mountain and he chatted with about that death with Moses and Elijah. And I bet they were saying to him, come on Jesus, it's not that bad. You're just gonna die and then look what, what's coming. Look what's on the other side. We can tell you about that. It's amazing. And though would have been there, to raise his hopes. And Jesus had a fresh assurance of his father's love because suddenly there's a booming voice and it says, this is my beloved son. Wow, that would have been amazing, wouldn't it? Poor old Peter wakes up in a sort of stupor and he says, uh, oh, it's great for us to be here. Let's build three tents, Lord. One for Moses, one for Elijah and one for you. You see, the amazing thing was to be in the presence of the Lord, to be in Christ's presence and to see his glory shining out. Be able to live at the highest and best that we're capable of doing. To have holy thoughts and pure desires. Now for us, God also does something similar. What he does is he, he makes a silence in our lives. He sets us apart by ourselves. You see what happened was Moses and Elias, they disappear. And what did the disciples say? They say, they looked up and they saw Jesus only. Now, exhaustion, weariness, doubt and monotony, these are very dangerous for our soul and for our well-being. These are the needs which only a direct touch of God can heal and can satisfy. Don't know whether you know of Horatio Bonner. He was a great Scottish preacher. And he wrote a hymn, and we sometimes sing it at our Eucharist or communion. And he says this, Here, O my Lord, I see thee face to face. Here would I touch and handle things unseen. And that's what coming into the presence of God is all about. Here would I touch and handle things unseen. You're stepping into a, an experience that you cannot have except when you're alone with the God in the company of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's saying, I want to stay here. I want to prolong this peace and this solitude. But he goes on to write, Too soon we rise, the symbols disappear. The feast, though not the love, is past and gone. And this is what happens to Jesus and the disciples. The quietness and the peace they've experienced, they've been transformed by it, not just Jesus, but the disciples. They've gone through something nobody else has ever gone through before. They've experienced God in a way that no one has ever experienced him before. And now they have to come down the mountain. While they were on the mountain, they saw no man but Jesus only. 
when they walk down the mountain, they don't talk about Elijah and Moses, they talk about Jesus. They don't talk about their visitation by God or the voice out of the clouds. They look and they see Jesus only with themselves. Isn't that interesting? Jesus only with themselves. That what they see is the Lord Jesus being present in their company. And that's what God wants us to know when we come away from our quiet time, from our prayer time. He wants us to know that we have been changed, we have been transformed, and that although we have to come back into the hubbub and the busyness of life, yet we are there, really, with Jesus only, knowing the love of God. The most memorable moment that they experienced was aloneness with Jesus. Okay, so they need to return. They need to go down the mountain. And if you read on, you'll see that they were confronted with sickness, with evil spirits, with lack of faith. But what we begin to realise that these circumstances can only be faced as we have aloneness with Jesus and we take with us the confirmation that God loves us and has commissioned us for his purpose. God will make a place of quietness and solitude for you. Just close your eyes, take advantage of it and see the vision of Jesus being alone with you and ministering to your needs. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you that you come to us in so many different situations. Just as you took Jesus and those disciples away into the quietness and the solitude, just help us to make space to be alone with you to draw on your resources, to know your love, and to go out refreshed into this world, to be your workers and your disciples. In Jesus' name.